their triumphs over heartbreak, their struggles to build new lives. Three years after the horror of 9-11, you want to look up? The loved ones left behind look to their future. Tonight, a Paul is on now special. 9-11, after the tears, hope rising. You're looking at a live picture tonight of sacred ground illuminated in downtown Manhattan, ground zero on the eve of a three-year milestone of 9-11. And good evening. Thanks so much for being with us tonight. Tonight, we are focusing on the future starting with tomorrow's date, September 11th. Perhaps it will always be a milestone, a day to look ahead as well as back. A chance to measure how far we've come and how so many lives have changed. The weather today in New York, remarkably similar to 9-11. A crystal clear blue sky, not too hot. It's unsettling, as if that hole in the skyline isn't enough of a reminder. There's been a death in the family, all our families. The pain is still here, duller now, a little further below the surface. We watched that first long winter and spring as the pile of rubble shrank, revealing the hole, the scar. People still come here to stare, or think, or just remember. Most walk by, business as usual, with guns and dogs reminding us that usual is now different. But New York and America have moved on. Tonight, our focus is not on real estate, but on lives. Lives changed forever. Those who survived to rise above the depths of 9-11. Like the sweeping structures that are just drawings today, but will be on the skyline. If not tomorrow, then one day. Nine eleven shattered thousands of American families and left so many children to grow up with only memories of a mother or a father. That loss will color who they are for the rest of their lives. Here's how some have found help moving forward. I'm Franco Stewart. I'm Ella Thompson. I'm 16 years old and I lost my dad on the 92nd floor of the second tower in the World Trade Center. I'm 16 years old and my dad died in September 11th. He was probably the top one or two people I could talk to about just about anything. He was funny. He's big. Like, you know. And, you know, he's a very, um, as we English like to say, a very jolly person. And uh, so he was a great guy. And uh, I really miss him. It's estimated that thousands of children suffered unthinkable loss on September 11, 2001. Franco and Ella lost their fathers. To help them deal with the loss, their mother sent them to Comfort Zone Camp, a bereavement camp which held special sessions for the children of 9-11. I was kind of uneasy about going. My father had only died a couple of months earlier, so it was kind of a weird situation, but it was nice to know that other people had experienced the same thing. I didn't want to go. My mom actually made me go. When I first met Ella, I could see somebody who was in a lot of pain and had a lot of emotions and was searching for outlets. Lynn Hughes founded the camp because she knew how hard it is for kids to deal with death. Her mother died when she was nine, her father when she was 12. There's something magical about camp. And when you take kids away from their day-to-day -day life and it's kind of an artificial bubble where time stands still, and in that artificial bubble, you create this safe atmosphere. Comfort zone looks like a regular camp. Color war, swimming, arts and crafts. But these activities help the campers, all of whom have lost a loved one, to talk, to grieve, and perhaps most importantly, to remember. I remember that day vividly in my mind because I woke up and 
it was such a gorgeous day, and I, I remember what I was wearing and all sorts of stuff, but you never know what's going to happen, and the worst did. And, uh, you know, so it does make me sad that I don't have a future with him in it. Um, but, you know, I think, I think memories are good, even if they do make you a bit sad, because, you know, that, that's what keeps you, connects you to that person. My memories of my dad used to um, upset me a lot. And I think what, what's great about this camp is you kind of learn to embrace them. And I'm trying. I'm going to get Mary Claire to smile. I'm going to. She's going to, like, genuinely smile. Last night I Ella has returned to Comfort Zone camp six times over the past three years. Franco, eight times. This summer, they came back. Not as campers, this time as counselors. And I think I can help them to see the positive light in their situation and uh, kind of keep them upbeat. <laughs> because I tended to get down in the dumps sometimes when I lost my dad, which is understandable, but they, I think they should understand that there's a good side to things and it's good to talk to people about their feelings. And, you know, it's fun to sort of be a counselor and sort of, you're not, like, in charge, but you are more than you were. And, you know, I talk to the kids, and my girls are great. I love you, Claire. The way they've come through, I mean, I think little kids have quite a lot of resilience, and these kids really do. I mean, they're, they're amazing. I love them. Oh, man, I love them. They're so great. <laughs> That love and admiration made a difference for Ella. I, I definitely think there are stages that you have to go through. And, you know, the first definitely is, you know, shock. And then the second, I was probably angry. I was very upset. And I think you learn to deal with it. And this place is great to learn how to sort of let it go and also embrace it. Now, three years after 9-11, these two campers turned counselors look forward. Franco, who excels in sports, wears his father's football jersey around camp. Ella sings her dad's favorite song in tribute. He would have been great in this atmosphere. You know, he, I mean, I'm sure he would have loved to do this sort of thing too. For kids, every day should bring a new experience, a new beginning. But that day, three years ago, was an ending for so many children. For these two, a journey started in tragedy has taken a new direction toward a future filled with new promise and renewed hope. And Ella Thompson is here with me now. I know you've traveled a very long and painful road to get to the point where you could talk about what your father might have loved most about this camp. What would have touched him? Well, he was a very loving person. He would have wanted to reach out to these kids and help them just as I really want to now. Um, the reason I go there is to do that, and that's what he would have done or he would have wanted to do. Because you understand every emotion they confront completely I went through it and I know I know exactly how they feel and I know that the best thing is just to talk it through and just to kind of accept it and um, that's just what he would have done There's something very pure about the shared experience you all had and we'd love for you to stand by and come back with us at the end of the hour to, right. to share more of your experience with us